by baker cheese. Hmm. Oh, oh real. Prepared by baker cheese. Baker oh. cheese. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I will call the Capital Improvements Commission to order. It is four o'clock. Call the roll. Mayor Ryan Sorensen is here. Older Person Mitchell. Here. Older Person Flicky Paneski. Here. Older Person Perella. Here. Plan Commission Member Jerry Jones. Here. Citizen Member Sarah Louise Harrison. Nick Dussault. All right. For those in attendance, if you're able to stand, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, next item on the agenda is approval of our minutes from our April 25th meeting. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion by Alder Flicky Paneski, second by Jerry Jones. So any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. Aye. Any opposition? Minutes are approved. Next, RO number 122-23 by administrator submitting the capital improvements requests for the years 2023 through 2027. Motions, comments, questions, thoughts, concerns, ideas? All right, um, I'm gonna hit the buzzer. We'll start with Alder Flicky Paneski. Go ahead, but hit that. There you go. Um, thank you. Um, I would like a, I would like an explanation again of the, the program that says yellow dash previously approved in the same year, and then the blue, which is previously approved in a different year so that I got that clear in my head. Um, Administrator Wolf, you wanna take that one? I will do my due diligence to answer it again. So this is, uh, this explanation uh, dates back to uh, when Daryl Hufflin started. And basically the yellow previously approved in same year basically means that if it's yellow, that year it's, it is when it was going to be approved. The blue, previously approved in a different year means that it may have been, um, if we look at one of these where you see a blue, let's say it's a blue in a 2024, it could have actually been in the program in 23 and it was pushed out to 24 or it was in 20, say 25 and was pulled into 24. That it basically means that it was approved in a, in a prior year and it, and it moved um, according to when it was actually implemented. So again, the yellow and the blue just basically are to show that there's movement within, as we've talked about, projects have been kicked down the road. These are to show you that these have either moved or they were, um, they were moving within the uh, capital, improve, capital improvements program. Alder Penesky, yeah. follow up? Yes, so in 2023, there were 14 little yellow marks. In 2024, there are 16 yellow ones. So those 16, when we approve the budget, when we approve this plan today, we're approving items for 2023, but not 2024. When we get to 2024, we have to approve those again. That is correct. What, what we are focusing on, this is a five-year capital improvements plan. The, co the commission or committee should be focusing on 2023 with the understanding of what's in 24, 25, 26, and 27. We, with a five-year plan, we are trying to show the council and this committee what is, what is in 20, 2023, because we're trying to stay within a budget, and we're trying to show the committee and commission and council 
basically what our proposed spending is for 24, 25, 26, 27. So basically it's to allow the committee and commission and council to better understand where the departments are looking to have additional projects in the future. So if the committee, commission, council were to say, well, where's this road? Or what are we doing next year? Or what are we doing the year after? You have an understanding of where those projects can land and what the spending will be for the future years. So again, we're just trying to show in a five-year program where that additional spending is going to be. So if a, if a council member was wondering, well, where's my road? Well, if it's in the, th the five-year program, we'll be able to show you where that road is proposed. If uh, Director Beeble uh, during the five-year program says, you know what, this road is actually in worse shape um, or a sewer project popped up or a granting a grant project popped up, then we would move and juggle around the the other four years. We're really focusing on 2023 for the approval, um, which will also allow us to um, better understand our financial borrowing for that next year. So, so if it's yellow, we approve something. In st if it's if it's pardon me, if it's blue. We approved something at a given year, but it carried over to the subsequent year and the subsequent year? It could have been appro approved, meaning it was in the program. It could have been in a prior year and it was pushed out, or it was in the program in a, in a, in a year further out and it was pulled in sooner. It means that it, the blue means that it moved. And the reason for the yellow and the blue is just to be able to show the committee, council, commission, all of the groups that there was movement within that line item. Okay, so for this year, four projects moved. They were either pushed ahead or pushed back. Pulled back, yes. Pulled back, okay. So, so when we get a phased project, phase one, phase two, phase three, mm -hmm. We'll pay for it this year if it's phase one. If we go to phase two, it shows up as blue in the subsequent year. No, because it's not moving. It's not moving. It's, it's not moving. there. It's, it's there. It's been approved. You're, we're, if it didn't move, it stays in its in its in, a, in its approved year. It would be yellow then. Okay. So so simplify. We approve something that's the first of. Four, pro four project sequences. Mm -hmm. If we approve it today, that means we've approved two, three, and four. Likewise, you've no. You're you're approving it in concept. You're only approving 2023. So in 2024, when we have capital improvements, that phase two would be in its place, and then the committee, commission, council would have to approve it as phase two for that year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nick? I have two questions. My first one was uh, last week when we met, uh, we talked about the constraints uh, that are inhibiting the fire department from improving. And one of those was lack of expansion uh, space in some of their departments. And I was driving down 25th Street and I saw fire station number three, is that mm -hmm. the right code? Um, and there seemed to be a big lot of land next to that one. And, and the discussion that we had last week was that's a, a, an important fire station for training and other things. And, and my question was there seemed to be quite a bit of land there for expansion, particularly on the north side of the that, I'll, Oh, sorry. Fire chief? Yeah, that is true. There is a land between James Imaging and Fire Station 3. However, uh, obviously we don't own that. That would be, uh, so this proposal that's on there for 2023 of that 2 million was to look at potential sites, whether it's that area, other options. Um, again, as Administrator Wolf had explained last week, we are trying to look at all avenues and take the best option that allows us to look into 30 years into the future and make sure our needs are met there. So, so that, that's, that's not fire department land. Correct, you know, it is not. Okay. My second question is we've got uh, a lot of uh, small projects here uh, with capital improvements over time. 
why isn't the library on one of these capital improvement plans for, for repairs and replacement of roofs and other things that are, I see that for the, um, the police department and other things where they're, they have uh, needs over time uh, and need funding for that. But I, I didn't see the library on it. I, I saw other things like the Indiana Trail Project. And I like books, so I was wondering why the library is not. Garrett, do you want to provide any input? Now, traditionally, um, some of the larger projects come to the city CIP projects. Some of them we fund um, through our reserve as well as uh, through donations. So we have a foundation. Some of those smaller repairs we do ourselves, depending on what they are. For instance, during COVID, uh, we had uh, front doors replaced that were pull handle doors, and we got the electric ones that open up for you. And so this process, since it takes a couple years, we just decided to do that since it's a smaller project ourselves. So there's some things that we, usually the, the larger facility type things we bring to this, to this group. So the library is not a larger facility issue? Um, we have facility issues, yes, but um, so sometimes we bring it to the, and this is actually something uh, Todd uh, has been talking to the library board about and, and how to kind of come up with a plan on how to work with the library. So um, we've been actually discussing this very, very problem. So next year we can perhaps see the library as part of the long range planning? Correct, and I, I believe I've, I'm sorry. I, you know, I've been on this committee for five or six years and it's, it's gotten substantially better and I, I appreciate the work that everyone has done because it's more detailed and more laid out and the costs seem to be done. Well. Thank you, one of the uh, points that I've brought up is that Next year, you'll actually see a 10-year plan, okay. and that way we can actually, again, we only focus on the next year, but it allows the committee, commission, and council to understand the needs of the city outwards. That's, that's incredibly helpful and prudent. Correct. Again, it's hard, to, it's hard to focus on today and not understand what needs we have for tomorrow and the future, because if we don't, we as a city, in my opinion, from my own personal personal for preference, I don't want to make a decision today not realizing the ramifications and needs of, you know, two years, three years, 10 years out. If we spend too much money up front, we, something else may pop up that we, we weren't aware of. Uh, Sarah? I wanted to kind of piggyback off the, the library portion of that also. My understanding is that we are not funding anything this year for the library, correct? Finance Director. Thank you. We are looking at bringing forward a resolution to Council actually later um, this month to fund two projects at the library that are no longer in the CIP because they are bringing, being brought forward to 2022. That includes exterior wall maintenance, which is going to cost about $100,000, and then also a fire alarm panel replacement for $100,000. That resolution will be going to Council for approver, pr approval later this month. Got it. Um, and then my second, I, I want to caveat too is, um, as a citizen, I was a little bit disappointed. I kind of looked at the metrics of uh, the Mead Public Library and um, just some rough facts. Um, there are over 30,000 memberships at the library and roughly 13 to 14,000 uh, people that walk through those doors every day. And for us not to incorporate the library, um, feels to me as though we are not giving back to our community, which I can see that the numbers plainly see that it is a necessity in our community. Thank you. Alder Prella. It seems that I'm going to add to the choir because in fact, I, I really appreciate uh, the other members bringing up this subject. Um, when at last meeting, Garrett, um, explain the expense that he was asking for, I was actually surprised. I thought, wow, how is that possible that one of our, I mean, that that is the only expense brought up to this com uh, committee about uh, the facility for the library. Now, I, I want to reiterate like everybody else, I think that the mid library is perhaps the heart of the city. I consider it one of the major assets of the city, honestly. And so 
I do to um, think that we don't give the library enough attention in terms of money, especially considering that obviously it is a facility that belongs to the city. Um, so I, I wasn't aware actually of the other two projects that are going. So are those projects that we will completely um, cover for or there will be contributions from the library to cover those projects? And I know that is beyond the, the agenda of today, but it may have an impact on our decisions today too. The two projects that are bringing getting brought for forward to 2022 are going to be completely funded, not by the Library Foundation. Other, There is 50,000 that will be towards the fire panel from the Friends of the Library, Library Foundation. So I have a question which is not as rhetorical, but why, sh why does the foundation need to cover for that type of expense? I mean, infrastructural expense at the library. Who wants to take that one? Thank you. Right now, I've been working last year and this year working with uh, Garrett, Maeve Quinn, and Debbie D'Amico on better understanding the relationship at, with the city and the Mead Public Library. The Mead Public Library receives funding from different resources, the city, the county, um, and other, other groups. They get levy um, dollars. They also get donations. So they, by state statute, they are a, a unique, I hate to say unique, they, they are a unique gem. They are part of the city, but yet they also have the ability to operate on their own. They have their own committee, you know, commission, and they take, they take direction from that group. Similar to transit, as an example, who gets city funding, state and federal funding, they have their own commission that makes the, is the decision arm, even though they're part of the city. So transit, as an example, they are responsible for their facility. They can get state and federal funding and they, and they take care of it. The city does contributions, um, but technically transit is its own entity. The library is its own entity but they are part of the city. So we have a collaboration where, as I'll use the roof as an example, because these are projects that were prior to myself. The um, agreement prior to me was that the uh, library had to put a certain portion of money away each year for repairs like the roof. So the roof was estimated at 300 plus thousand, and each year for so many years they put away to, to put away up to 50% of it, and then the city would borrow the other 50%. And that's kind of the collaboration that they've had. The library has um, been very generous in doing projects on their own because, as Garrett said, the capital improvements project and program, you literally have to plan years in advance to get approval. And then it goes comes down to which what's more important. So because of the funding that the library has and with uh, Debbie's assistance in, you know, juggling the dollars per se, they've been able to, you know, raise money for carpeting, do the, do the front door project. They've, uh, they've done he the heating and cooling with the city. So the city does contribute, but we don't pay 100% of, of the needs that they, that they have. But we also need to ha open up our communication and have a better, I call it the bridge, building the bridge, so that we better understand what their needs are for the future. Because again, there's a lot of, a lot of needs within the city, thus the 10-year program, that we, we know we're gonna need to do, but we don't know what they are. I hope that answers your question. Any follow-up? So you, you, you did answer my question, and I really appreciate it. Um, I guess the, the, the way I look at it is that the, the decision we make today or that we make within this committee for the capital improvements of the city also in some ways demonstrate the city's um, priorities, obviously, 
and also the city's approach to the services of the community and the philosophy behind it. So it is true that, for example, what the library is able to contribute may because they, they have been good with budgeting, they have been reserving some money, they can contribute to some project, major infrastructure projects. However, we all know that those monies could go to fantastic additional programs, to books, to assets in the library. So the question would be, do we as a city um, give enough attention to this asset? Do we contribute enough? So it, I understand that maybe they, at this point, they will be able to contribute 50% of the roof, but should they? And it is an open question. Anyone wanna answer that? I guess I'll jump in again. The water's getting warm anyway. I guess what I would recommend for the Capital Improvements Council, uh, Committee is also something that I think is also a, a direct need for the council to, to better understand. Um, we only have so, many re so much revenue coming in, and again, the library is an example, and let's use transit, let's go back to transit as an example. Transit has a union, transit has certain wage expectations, transit is, as important um, because it touches every everybody, every constituent, even visitors, just like the library is a gem that helps so many people in our, in our community and outside our community, and we need to remember that. It is a resource library where the library actually does receive additional funding being a resource library. But what, what I do need the council committee and the capital improvements committee to understand is this is a bigger, a bigger discussion than we can have just in capital improvements. This is, this is more of uh, um, what we wanna do moving forward as a city, because if we, if we move dollars around and we say this, this group is more important than this group, we still only have so many dollars to play with, and we have to remember that, that if we put more money, and we're also going into a wage study that's going to affect everybody, if we put more money to, um, to one group other, over the other group, we need to understand the ramifications of that. We are running our budgets so tight that we are really on uh, risk of reducing our services and we are shorthanded in so many areas. And then we also look at the cost of economics with um, you know, supply costs going up. I'm sure book costs are going up. Everybody's having costs going up. Our, our overhead costs are going up. And realistically, just like, like uh, and I'm digressing, but just like our personal budgets at home, our budgets are, are getting tighter and tighter at home because our revenues are going down because the value of the dollar. So if we, I agree with everybody that the library is a gem. It is very important. We have a lot of gems and we're very, very fortunate in our community to have, you know, the, our lakefront, our marina, our, our, our transit system that travels all over our community and outside our community, our, our water system, our sewer system. I mean, we have so many things as a city, but what we forget is we only have so many dollars in the checkbook to spend, and then we, we need to prioritize that. So my recommendation to the group would be that we, we move forward this year with the understanding that the council and the departments are going to help better understand with our strategic planning what are the priorities of the city and then how can we build that bridge with the library to say, will the city be allowed to assist in getting involved with the library so that we can work together on our efficiencies and effectiveness with the dollars that we have to, to be able to get these things done. The, the money that they've put aside for their half of the roof isn't gonna save the, the world per se because they're putting this year and I believe it was last year, they put $27,000 towards the roof. Correct me if I'm wrong, Debbie. It was the 26 that account we held that didn't have to fund anymore. Yeah. You gave us that to put in, plus I put in the 10,000 um, 
previous. If anybody wants to see how I've done that, I'd be more than welcome to sit down with them at any time. But I believe we're about eight thousand dollars away from about your your half. Away from my half. Yeah, and, and then. I also ran calculations on what the work would cost today versus two thousand twenty-five, and I guessed about four hundred thousand. And the calculation that I came out with is about three hundred ninety thousand. Yeah. So the bottom line is the longer it takes to get these projects done, the more it's gonna cost. And that's one of the pet peeves that I have that my department heads uh, have heard me preaching is we have to have accelerators in here to take into consideration the cost increases because $100,000 five years ago is not $100,000 today and $100,000 today is not $100,000 in five years. So we have to better understand that and have contingencies. We tend to go over over budget on projects quite often. Um, and these are just some of the um, opportunities for improvement in the future. All right, thank you for those comments. Alder flicky -Pineski. Thank you very much. Um, let's, let's get away from the philosophical concept. What if the library building ended up in a heap of bricks for whatever reason tomorrow? That comes off of the city's balance sheet, does it not? Does Bye. the transit department, if their building ended up in a heap of bricks, that comes off of the city's balance sheet. So in my mind, the city owns those buildings. Is that accurate? Yes, city owns them. So if the, city, the city. if the city owns the buildings, the city should use capital improvements to improve those buildings so they don't end up in a heap of bricks. I don't care if it's transit or library or police or fire. Thank you. All right, any other discussions on the RO presented in front of us? Any motions? Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Chair. I would move that we approve. All right, there's been a motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second it. Motion second. Final discussion, comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Chair votes aye, that is approved. Thank you. Um, next, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. There's been a motion and second. All those in favor of adjourning, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. We are adjourned at 427. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.